Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Excessive Pop Culture Discussion. This is our weekly unscripted pop culture show where we take all of the headlines that are not about news or the president or anything important and really talk about them until we get thirsty or we run out of time. I'm your host, as always, Daniel O'Brien. My co-host, co-host Maggie Mae Fish, oh, is here. Oh, what I the f***? And Soren's back. That's what happens. Mag you leave. I invited other... Dan said that other people could be on the show. I was inviting other people to do it. Yeah. And you get grandfathered in as a co-host yeah. just because you were here the whole time? She I'm refused thirsty. to let other people come in, and I, I recognize what a great strategy that was. Such a bummer. I boxed right. out well, everyone I'm on else. the show, it's fine. <laughs> Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be the tone for this episode. Let's get right into <laughs> the weekend headlines. There's a lot going on. Uh, everyone hates the Emoji movie. Comic-Con mm. just happened. Uh, the Barbie movie is going to go forward with a new star. But Maggie, you wanted to talk about something that I learned about from you and not even just yes. being on the internet. Well, hi, look at that. Uh, yeah, so James Cameron said that he wants to uh, again reboot the Terminator series with a another trilogy. And I love the Terminator. I think the Terminator is a film that could be reboot every three years if it wanted to. It's a universal theme. It's the, you know, su I, hello, I totally got this. Attention, oh, you know, just like the, the you know, the um, state or whatever, the government taking over everything. I think mm -hmm. every generation can relate to aspects of that. Uh, but I don't think James Cameron should do this. I don't think he should touch it. Mm -hmm. um, he, the last two movies have been uh, awful. And I don't think he deserves to do three more. I don't... The, Terminator to me is one of the, the most bizarrely persistent franchises. <laughs> it's one that I feel like Terminator 2 was great. We all agree. That's the Terminator mm -hmm. movie that we always should have made. The first Terminator was pretty good. Not as good as Terminator 2. Um, but like a fine one-two mm -hmm. movie thing. I really like the idea of making the bad guy the good guy and all the technology gets better. And just the growth of uh, Sarah Connor was fun to me. Then they made a third one, it was bad. And another one, it was bad. Mm -hmm. They made the Sarah Connor Chronicles on TV, that was bad. Oh, and I, I don't know who's asking for these Terminator movies because it, uh, oh, casual. I think, I think, I think Stop writing might in. just be stopped yeah. writing <laughs> <laughs> Might go straight to James Cameron and he reads them. Uh, no, I agree with you. I think that that's, it's tough with that series because as, as engaging as the story is, the more mm -hmm. Terminators that you make, the more, like you're pulling at the thread of the logic. <laughs> like, why the Terminators don't go back even further. Why they don't send like six at once. Like there's all these right. problems with, with the actual mm -hmm. logic of it that you start to realize, even at the end of T2, which I've now seen by the way, <laughs> 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 that like at the end that you're really starting to, everything's coming, like, coming undone. They're barely holding mm -hmm. the sweater together by the end of the movie. And then finally they can just drop it in the lava and be like, oh, thank God we're yeah. done. Yeah. But once you get into like the logistics of Skynet and when why the robots are doing what they're doing and how we're choosing to send people back, mm -hmm. it's like, oh no, this doesn't make any sense. I think there's, there's right. the reason that I think these <laughs> Terminators worked is because it was a very specific uh, point in time for us as audience goers. One, Arnold Schwarzenegger was still very new to us and very, a very compelling thing to look at. Yeah, he's this really not an actor intense, or human. Seems like an alien. You you buy him so much as a robot in the first Terminator, and it's like, look at this thing I've never seen before, behaving like a robot and being like I would be so f terrified if that thing came at me. And the other part of it was just the with T two, which is like the earnestness that is allowed to '90s movies that we sort of don't do anymore. Like with T two, was like now I want to see the robot say like funny, silly things, like get the little boy to make the robot say yeah. a catchphrase and. <laughs> And yeah. like make it like a buddy road trip movie where they're all hanging out yeah. doing doing cool robot stuff. And now we, uh, Schwarzenegger is so part of the branding of this franchise that it's weird to us if he's not there. But mm -hmm. also he has no place in it now because time has passed and he and he doesn't look like an, right. an amazing Terminator robot anymore. Well, I think that James Cameron wants to pass it on to somebody else, mm -hmm. like as in Schwarzenegger right. would so be in it. So we're not even like there's is Sarah Connor even the. The target of it anymore? Or? I don't know, guys. But wouldn't it be exciting At to some find point, out? Like in the future, the robots just be like, "We're not gonna beat this, this, uh, this JC, this John Connor kid. Let's right. just enjoy the future that we have now." <laughs> <I guess. laughs> and once you have time travel, I feel like 
the, the first instinct is to be like, yeah, we go back and kill Hitler if we got time travel now. Mm -hmm. But then you start to realize, oh no, Hitler was because of some systemic problem. It would be really easy to just fix that instead. So as the robots, you would just go back and you'd be like, well, I know how Skynet was made. I'll just go back and as a T-1000, uh, become an imposter to some scientist and just make it earlier. Yeah. When John Connor's still not even born, <laughs> and then we have Skynet earlier, and it's uh, we get to have the whole uprising before anything else, anything we have to worry about happens. Yeah, yeah I still think there's room to like the guys who did uh, Stranger Things. I mm -hmm. think they'd be the Duffers, Duffers. brothers. The, du the Duffers. I hate their name. I hate their <laughs> unit. But I do think that they would, you know, could breathe some life into the series. Okay, sure, I'll, I'll, sure. I'll go on I think if it. different directors made a different movie that was <laughs> not Terminator, that was about robots, yeah. sure, Time I think that would be pretty okay. interesting. Okay, I'm in the minority here, <laughs> I can clearly see. Soren, did you want to talk about anything this week? Yeah, I do. So, football season is coming up again, mm -hmm. and I love football season, um, mostly because of fantasy football. But I'm also a big fan of like fantasy movies and sci-fi, and. Uh, I wouldn't be above LARPing if someone invited me at some point. Now, but ESPN has a new commercial out, a series of commercials out, and the tagline mm -hmm. of it is uh, Bad Fantasy, Good Fantasy. Yeah, we're gonna quickly play a clip. You cannot go into battle without the proper blade. I got one right. Brother Malachi! Summon the finest mighty steel blade from thine steed. What? Can you get a sword out of your minivan for Steve? Spending a football Sunday like this? Bad fantasy. Playing ESPN fantasy football to make Sundays real fun? Good fantasy. <laughs> the way that they've established it is, like, they're really just firing shots at a fantasy crowd. They're like, look, oh. there's this bullshit fantasy, and then there's good fantasy, which is our app that you can have on your phone or your iPad. Right, it's, <laughs> it's such a strange commercial because they're like, this is what your fantasy looks like now, and it's people in a park in, like, mm. homemade armor, like, dueling and having a good time. That's trying to cool. do the voices, That's trying cool. to be like yeah. a character and yeah. everything. And uh, having to break the fourth wall every once in a while, be like, go get some swords out of the van or whatever they have to do. Right. But, but then they're really establishing like, F those nerds, you should be playing fantasy football. Which, I mean, flawed, 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 flawed way of trying to gain a new audience anyway. Because if you're trying to cast your net, yeah. if you're as a fantasy football uh, app, then you have to reach into a group like this. You have to dip into right. people who aren't already football fans. Yeah. yeah. So it's such a be like, weird. hey, nerds, you want to play this game instead? <laughs> Whatever you're doing, this one's more fun. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that's important to you is stupid. <laughs> Try cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's also the things they juxtapose because it's, this is your fucking fantasy Sunday and it's people doing swords. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's the good one. And it's a guy outdoors on a phone alone, alone. while people are sword oh fighting my behind God. They're having a lot of fun in the background. He came clearly to do this, except his, he, so he's sitting there in just shoulder pads mm -hmm. and like a catcher's uh, padded chest thing. Yeah. And he's he's just playing on his phone while everyone else is having fun behind him. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, fantasy series are about you know different factions fighting, whatever. Very nerdy. But uh, football is about uh, greasy, sweaty men mm -hmm. wrestling. Yeah, and I'm not, not sure that. greasy is part of it. <laughs> yeah, greasy. My <laughs> football, they're <laughs> greasy. <laughs> and I and and you probably never played fantasy. Fantasy football mm. is very much like D and D. Right. Like you yeah. have like these characters who you're throwing at one another, basically. Where you're like, my wide receivers versus <laughs> yours. <laughs> it's so hard to keep up with the stats in fantasy football for me, and and like. I have no problem remembering all of the sigils and words of houses from Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. but the football stuff is like, I'm just, I can't, I'm not nerdy enough to get into this shit. I just can't, I wow. can't keep track of that many football players. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a weird audience to attack. It's not even just the LARPers. I mean, the people who would be interested in the role playing are also the people who are interested in the movies that are sci-fi based, right. like right. the shows that are the, maybe those popular shows on television yeah, right now. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. mainstream now. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's like everyone who watches your, Game of Thrones. It, right, what's, like, your, uh, what's your fantasy Sunday? Yeah, it's Game of Thrones. So I, I look <laughs> yeah. forward to it all year. Right? It, it means that there's a group of uh, people sitting in a in a room who are trying to decide how to advertise this, and they're like, all right, you know how there's like that fucking awful fantasy, like <laughs> the D&D oh. &D crowd? All right, well, let's just establish, everybody knows they're bad, <laughs> so we're just gonna f them, but then we're gonna establish that this is the good kind. Like, there is actually yeah. a good fantasy out there, everybody. Don't worry, we've got you covered. Yeah, right? it's you sitting alone at a party <laughs> yeah. while it's you're getting engaged, yeah. and you're it's, on your it's, phone. It's That's so stressful and awful. It'll give you a headache all day, because you want to watch every single game, and you're like, 
And what? I got you, Andrew Luck, because you're gonna score 30 points a game for me, and now you've got some sort of rotator cuff if you issue. Yeah, I, I'm cursed. I'm cursed. <laughs> I, I didn't. I used to just watch the Giants play. They're a, a football team and also a fantasy term, so I understand if there's confusion. I used to just watch the Giants <laughs> ah, play, and then yeah. uh, our director Adam got me into fantasy a couple years ago, and I really took to it. I really enjoyed it a whole lot, but. Uh, there was like a, a a year where we were at a bar every Sunday morning having like breakfast and beer watching nine games of football <laughs> yeah. simultaneously oh, for, wow. for an entire day and just like this is so much more expensive and it's taken up all of my Sundays now. Look at those guys running around outside with their friends and sword fighting. <laughs> where are they? How do I get to meet those folks? Please don't tell me where. That's uh <laughs> It for Soren. I hadn't uh, really, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't really again. considered for you that your team is the Giants. That mm -hmm. every other, like, every other team with their state, respective state, had been like, well, let's pick something reasonable. Let's pick, like, a <gasps> Cardinal. Or let's I pick. I somebody this the other day. Why Bronco. are they the Giants? And then the Giants were like, no, no, no. We're going for something fictional. Yeah. We're going to go, I guess yeah. the Giants and Titans are the only yeah. ones where they're like, Oh no! It doesn't have anything of this earthly right. realm. We're not bound by this this, right. <laughs> this stupid oh, field. Have you seen how fun anywhere? they're having playing with those swords out at back? Yeah. <laughs> in I hope the they were just theater? going through names, names, names. And we're like, we're the New York f***ing football giants, and the Rams were like, hold on, we're the Rams. We like to. We didn't know that these were right. available. The yeah. poor Colts were like, yeah. oh no, oh, oh no. we can be menacing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I think the only there's a team that learned from that's like. Oh, sh we we're gonna be some kind of bird, but we're, uh, we're we're jets now. We're physical jets. <laughs> we're also something cool. Right. Jets are cool, yeah. right? The Browns <laughs> just panicked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much fun. Football names. So normally we have some kind of uh, pre-conversation where we all kind of know what we're gonna talk about. Mm -hmm. This is uh, brand new information for a lot of people. It's a it's a story that I've been covering for a while. Is this your spotlight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm gonna hijack most of our most of the rest of our time here. Um, in recent years, nut theft has exploded into a statewide problem in California. I need you to be more specific. What is nut theft? And, uh, and in all of, of those words. <laughs> no. Uh, so California is uh, the largest producer of uh, almonds for the world. And we're up there with walnuts and uh, pistachios too. And uh -huh. people in the last four years, $10 million of nuts have been stolen in California and then like flipped and repurposed elsewhere. It's really easy to do. You need a uh -huh. big truck, you need fake IDs, and you need to understand how like security systems work. And then you just show that up sounds hard. and you can just like go to someone who's who manufactures a bunch of nuts. This happened a few years ago. I was like, I'm here to pick those up. They're going from, from here in Crane up to Canada. I'm the guy. And they're like, you're a little early. That's suspicious. I was like, no, it isn't. So they gave them all the nuts and then the nuts just vanished. And they're just gone. They never made it to Canada. And people are losing so much money on this. And it's almost, never reported to the police because all of the, the nut manufacturers don't want to look foolish. They're all embarrassed because they're like, no, we just lost $500,000 on these f***ing cashews and like, we don't want that to hurt other future business deals. We don't right. want people to be scared away from us. But there's, there's so many uh, like different agencies that you have to go to to get mm -hmm. a truck and there's not really a clear line of who is doing any of these things. And just in my research that I'm the, Every detail about this is exciting to me, and it makes me want to do want it to be true detective. Like they they have uh, all the truck people are up on burners. Like there's there's no way to contact anyone because the the phones are like Miami based burner phones that get used <gasps> once and then get destroyed. Holy sh! The the guy this is so f cool. The uh, Chad Parker or no yeah Chad Parker he's the uh, uh, yeah uh, of course Chad. he's the detective for the agricultural crime division. Oh. In California, Precious. so you think this is his first case ever? I th it's got to be his only thing, Aww. yeah. And he's been on this, and he's like so beaten down because <gasps> there's th he's just chased it for away. so long. Yeah, and and he, I bet he has no funding, by the way. I bet no. he has no backup. Yeah. No one's listening to mm -hmm. him at the department. He's that crazy cop that shows up yeah. every day. That's you. Get their stuff. They're he's, taking our nuts. He's <laughs> driving his own car to these <laughs> yes. crime scenes. FBI doesn't oh. care because it's not like a, a sexy crime, and there are so much. Other things going on that are that are are way more dangerous. Although Mr. Pina is naked. I know, I know, and we'll get into that. Um, but this got a monocle. quote from a Parker a and a monocle. top hat. Uh, quote from Parker: I'm left with a report saying someone showed up, and I've got a license plate that doesn't exist. They disappear into the night. 
Oh, ne- they're nut ninjas. <gasps> yes, they're nut ninjas. That's right. Oh. The other people that I know, like when I make the True Detective season three version of this show, a lot of it's going to be focused on uh, this Parker guy, the agri- agricultural crimes de- detective, yeah. oh. and also Sheriff Mike Bordreau, uh, who a few years ago set up a, oh, when six shipments uh, of nuts were stolen in one year. That's $1.6 million of nuts what? in one year. Um, he was tasked with creating a new unit made of six detectives, the Nut Theft Task Force. They're very serious, barrel-chested men in oh. jeans and cowboy boots and white button-down shirts. That's the NTTF. Yes. Yeah. What is that? Oh, the nut, yes. Got it. <laughs> I'm all caught up now. Um, and yeah, it's, it's one of those things that there's like uh, a level of incompetency. It's really easy to fake being a truck driver because mm. if I'm a company with a bunch of nuts to get rid of, I go to, the only option I have is to go to a broker who connects me with a trucking company. And the brokers, uh, all they do is get paperwork and file it without reading it. I'm a person who's like, I have a truck company, here's my document. And they're like, got it, you're a truck company, I'll let you know if anyone has anything that they need shipped. And it's really hard to uh, put anyone behind bars on this because none of the truckers know that they're doing it. Because that's still oh. like, I'm a guy who's out of work and I can drive a truck. And the shady company will say, yeah, drive, the, here's a truck for you, go pick up nuts oh, and then I deliver them know. to this other spot and we'll give you $600. And then, you know, later these guys will end up pleading guilty for stealing nuts, even though they had no right. idea that's what they were doing because it looks like any other job. And they don't mind doing that because the jail time for stealing nuts is so small. And also there's uh, uh, a prison crowding sy- pop problem. So they get like very abbreviated sentences yeah. anyway. Them and the murderers. Oh man. Like so, okay. <laughs> The, who, who's flipping the nuts? Like that's who you, my question. Are they selling nuts? Them? Where do they sell them? I think you, you'd have to take them to a distributor, right? Oh, yeah, yeah no. you know? we're gonna get there. Um, oh, late in 2013, Parker uh, got a call from a nut broker in Brooklyn. One of his distributors in Detroit was getting undercut on walnut prices. This is a quote. He believed that someone was selling hot nuts. <laughs> really did it. <laughs> it's it, it really is often uh, they go to like supermarkets and small grocery stores and they're yeah. they're flipping them that way. So if you're if you're asking like who is buying these, it's you. It's oh. it's you anytime you've been anywhere because they're not like like a walnut's not going to have like a skew number to it or anything like that. There's right. no way to trace these things. They, you can't put a die pack in with them. Nope. You can't do anything. Yeah, these you are, can't these put are, stickers on it like apples. Right. Yeah. These are people who used to be stealing Xboxes and cell phones and getting caught. And they'd be like, oh, no one's tracing food. Yeah. And everybody always wants food. So we're just going to do it's this so and no one's going to catch us. That's insane. I po- that poor sheriff, I'm sure, has written in his desk, like, mm-hmm. oh, I know. Uh, you crack the case. Like, something yeah. written down, like, some uh, great pun, and just can't use it ever. It's never going to happen. Like, oh, no. It's just so good. <laughs> drink himself to an early grave because he's so beaten down by this. There's, uh, I really liked it when I f- first got a hold of the story and thought it was, like, you know, incompetent guys bumbling around stealing nuts because it seemed like no one's going to miss a couple of nuts, are they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, uh, largely believe that it's connected to Armenian power, which is uh, uh, like well, a, 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 a mafia gang yeah. that is huge all over the country and very specifically in Los Angeles. Yes. They, they have ties to larger Russian-based crime organizations. And they are believed to be at the head of this and like Sheriff Bordreau with his task force and Parker both believe these people are involved, but they can't prove it. And their whole thing is like, it's not about what you know, it's about what you can prove. We know it's these guys, we're, we can't do it, so we're just following the money all over the country. And uh, they've got a shell organization. There's we. That's how I imagine he laughs. Would you realize that one of the headlines that I read for this uh, called it a shell game, and I don't think they knew that it was. Oh, uh, what a bummer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, <laughs> there's a. One final thing I'll leave you that makes this like even more exciting to me yeah. is there was a person of interest uh, in LA that they really thought this is one of the heads of this thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, he co-signed on a loan for an LA County official worth five million dollars. So oh. now oh. It's connected. they're all connected. Now that it's now they're, they're they've like infiltrated. It this, goes all the way to the top. This, yeah. This damn mafia organization stealing all these nuts, making so much money, and no one's doing anything about it. There's so Glendale Glendale in mm-hmm. Los Angeles has uh, and maybe just Los Angeles entirely has a larger Armenian population than Armenia does, and so there's like you can talk to FBI agents, you can talk to police force, and they're like, oh yeah, there's a huge uh, Armenian mafia presence in 
in these certain areas of, of Los Angeles. And Glendale in particular has like two families that own it, or three families that own pretty much everything. And you'd think, well, why is there no crime there? How come everywhere else that you have these mafia syndicates, it's, there's a ton of crime? The nuts. And the reason <laughs> is, <laughs> not quite yet. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll get oh, there. Tell me when you want me to say that again. Okay. <laughs> I mean, so they've got their hands in everything. So they, uh -huh. they, yeah, in the the nut jar, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But uh, um, sack, yeah, the nut sack. <laughs> and they, they come off the guard. reason that there's no, uh, you don't see a lot of crime. There's no like bodies in the streets and stuff like that. They're not warring with one another. Is because they are warring, but it's happening in Armenia. So anytime that there's like some slight between the two mm -hmm. families here, it gets translated to Armenia, and they do the fighting there. Because if they were to do anything here, mm -hmm. immediately everyone would come down on them. All of our law enforcement would come down on them, right. And shut everything down. But that way they can they outsource their fights, yeah. right? All they they've got these yeah like warring proxies in oh. Armenia. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Not, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. It's yeah. that's, that's that's right. Oh. It is that. Man, I, up on the third I don't one. think we got a single good delivery on any of those. But we're gonna keep them <laughs> okay, all. In. All right. Uh, we that's want to talk to the sheriff. Can we get a hold of Yeah. Uh, Can I you be our so. next guest? Sorry, sorry. I, I would like to. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> sorry, my co-host has made a request. And yeah. I have to honor that. That so. is, and that name is as good as like Reggie Ledoux. You I want know. that to? Oh boy, yeah. it's so good. All right. Well, that's the week in headlines. We're going to get into our main story this week, which is Comic Con. Comic Con. <laughs> Bad fantasy. <laughs> Bad fantasy? Yeah. yeah. Bad fantasy. Uh, Comic-Con happened and a whole lot of trailers dropped, as they will always do, and we're going to talk about them. There. Justice League has a new trailer. It's uh, pretty bad. I mean, the entire <laughs> point of the trailer was to let you know that Superman was going to be in Justice League. They've been bizarrely coy about this for... Yeah. Ever, and I don't know why. Obviously, he was always going to be back right. for Justice League. And they don't even show him in the trailer. They just talk about him a lot. Is it because of the, the mustache? It's because of the mustache, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, will you tell Soren what that is, or our audience, if they don't know what... Because what, uh, uh, that's right. an insane thing to say. Correct me if I get this wrong, <laughs> but uh, so when they originally shot it, uh, Superman had a mustache. You got it no. wrong. No, yep. that is wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's, what's the other movie? Mission Impossible. Okay, so he's, he's, he's tied up in shoots for both of them, and they're doing right. maybe even reshoots for Superman, mm -hmm. or it just when it extended. And because he's got to shoot Mission Impossible where he's got the mustache, they have to now CGI mm -hmm. out his mustache for all of the reshoots mm -hmm. or the extended shoot of Superman. I think we will find out um, in a budgetary breakdown how much money was spent CGIing <laughs> Superman's mustache out of this movie. And then right. there will be a full-blown riot against Hollywood. Well, America. especially oh, if yeah. that upper lip, lip looks really silly <laughs> for whatever it is. It's just clearly not his. <laughs> or it's just like paint is blur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a really bad Photoshop job where they just use like the... the um, <laughs> Per, oh, it's the stamp tool. No, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, close stamp. Yeah, yeah, close stamp. Yeah. I want to reach out to both studios and be like, oh, I, I don't want to be a scab or anything like that. But what are your CGI guys charging? Okay, give me nine hundred dollars. I'll shave him and give you a fake mustache. <laughs> Mission Impossible. This is the we made. Right. You're the guys who made fake faces like in our brains. You must know that we we've solved people not having beards before. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. But anyway, Superman, his lip, his mustache, they don't show All up. Right. We, we, the closest bit we get is at the end of the, of the trailer, uh, someone shows up and Alfred looks and it's like, he said you'd come back, I hope you're not too late. And we all get, it's Superman. Because it's not the Green Lantern? It's not the Green Lantern. Oh. They Golly. say in the trailer, no lanterns. Okay, good. So, oh, So okay. there's that. Um, it looks pretty stupid. There's uh, <laughs> one thing that uh, immediately jumped out at me was that um, Gordon is turning on the bat signal, which is a giant lever that he flips down and sparks enormously co uh, immediately come out Super of it. Super dangerous. It's like yeah, it's the most it. Zack Schneider adjustment to a thing I could conceive of. Like if I want to boil down what his yeah. contribution to movies uh -huh. are, it's sparks, no, sparks fly out of, of a f***ing searchlight. Yeah. Technology yeah. we perfected a long time ago. Right, things that you would hope would, you know, go it, correctly. Yeah. <laughs> there are things I'm looking forward to with it. I, the Flash seems very great. He's going to steal the movie. He seems really funny. He seems great. Yeah. I like him. I like that uh, actor. Ezra? Mm -hmm. He's wonderful. It's basically what, whatever they, they're replicating from Spider Man in the Avengers, they're like, oh, we can do that with Flash. He'll just yeah. be that guy here. Yeah. He's the young one who doesn't have anything else going on in his life <laughs> yeah. and needs some buddies. Yeah. <laughs> and Wonder Woman is in this one, and and uh, mm. and we love her, and it's clear that we're going back to uh, Themyscira. Hmm? 
Yeah. Them and Skyrim? Where she's yeah. from. The, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We get to we get to see that. We get to see her mom and like all the all the Wonder Woman warriors on horses. It so looks like maybe they insane. get obliterated. I, like maybe this yeah. this gentleman with the axe who comes into town. He gives a uh, shit. Yeah. Hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but otherwise, there's a, a thing that jumped out at me from it was uh, Bruce keeps talking about how great Superman is, and he says Superman was a beacon. He didn't just save people; he made them see the best in themselves. And I have two issues with that. That's not how Batman feels about Superman. Oh, the oh. only time we, ha- w- their only interaction is like Superman. Batman looks up and sees that Superman destroyed his building, and then spends an entire movie hating him and mm-hmm. trying to murder him, yep. and then briefly is like, "Why did you say Martha?" It turns out their mom had the same name, but Mommy. he doesn't. He has a lifetime not seeing Superman as a beacon of hope or making anyone feel good about who they can be. Also, yep. this is referring to Superman in the comics. Superman in the comics and the cartoon show and other movies is a beacon. This Superman, this one that we got in Man of Steel and mm-hmm. Batman vs Superman is this brooding, angry, murdering alien that was like very divisive to a whole yep. lot of people. They yeah. were calling him false god and, and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So I don't know They've, they've already lost the characterization that they've built in their stupid movies. They, they, they knew it was bad, I think. They're, they're, I think they're treating it like there's character development in Bruce Wayne, where he's like, uh, now I see that Superman was always what he, everybody originally liked about him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ooh, well, well, yeah, if we could just duck those past two movies. Yeah. There's also a scene where uh, Jason Momoa's Aquaman yeah. surfs a guy down a building. Okay. In, no, 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 into a building. Into yeah, a building. It's not like I'm he's into like it. surfing him down the side of something. Now mm-hmm. I'm on board. Before I was like, hmm. Yeah. All right. He I'll just see surfs it. him straight <laughs> through the building and then jumps out the side. Oh, man. The bottom. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He also talks in it, which is kind of a, it really blows it because mm. what they were doing with Aquaman in the first trailer it seemed all very cool. I mean, he was just out there drinking at s- like swill and getting yeah. hit by waves and then throwing Bruce Wayne up against a wall. And I was like, I am on board. <laughs> yeah. And then he talks and I'm, and I'm like, oh, I am. I don't right. think I'm on board with this movie. Now anymore. he's like wisecracking Thor in this. Yeah. And he's like, oh. it, like, it's one of those things that <clears throat> uh, Jason Momoa was perfect in Game of Thrones because you gave him a fake language where he could sound really cool and intimidating. And now this is something that I've also picked up from just like interviews of him talking that he just doesn't sound very great. And no. you're just like, mm. oh, I think we're all going to die if I'm being totally honest. I don't think we're going to make it Superman. <laughs> This is, like, he's got like such a weird <laughs> surfer vibe to him. It was like, We're not gonna oh, make it through this one, dude. Gnarly <laughs> wave, man. <laughs> Gotta get back to the Hall of Justice, guys. <laughs> Alfred! <laughs> How smoothies are ready for us when we get back? <laughs> um, speaking of Thor type characters, Thor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ragnarok. Is a Thor type character. Did you see that trailer? Yeah, I did. Uh, I think it looks fun. I don't have strong feelings about the <laughs> Thor franchise. agnostic about Thor, that's fine. I am. Uh, I didn't, I liked the first Thor movie, mm-hmm. liked it. Didn't love the second one, I fell asleep. Yeah. And this one looks fun and fresh. I love Jeff Goldblum. Uh, I love that the Hulk is gonna be in it. It looks I fun, I, lo- I love that uh, director. Uh, yeah. Cause mm-hmm. I loved Hunt for the Wilder People and yeah. What We Do in the Shadows are great. It does look like a fun, action comedy yeah. thing. It doesn't feel like a Thor movie and I think I'm okay with that. Like, Agreed. Just when he's talk, he's talking to Hulk about, you know, oh, I lost my hammer, it was a couple days ago. It's still, <laughs> still pretty, pretty fresh. fresh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. that's not how he no. talks. It's funnier than how he talks and I'm fine with that, but it's clear like his time on earth has made him a dude now. Right. And, and we that's just have great. to accept yeah, that. Yeah, that's exactly what he should be. I mean, all the stuff that was good about the original, the first Thor movies and then also in the Avengers is, uh, Thor being silly <laughs> and like trying to understand things yeah. and just not getting it. Him being the Drax, is that what the character, Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Him being like the Drax of the group is really, really fun. And anytime you get Thor too serious, it's it's sort of, it's not fun anymore. Cause he's just a god. Like yeah. when things are serious, right. yeah, gods are good at that sort of thing. Right. At being somber and-, and mm-hmm. At the end of sober. Thor, he, he grows up and takes his, on his responsibilities. Like, okay, I'm ready now to be a noble, funless god. It's right. Like, oh, there's three of these movies? <laughs> oh yeah. boy. Oh, you decide not to have fun? Yeah. Yeah. Bring That's... Loki back, he was yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Also, but speaking of that, he, uh, cause they've got Kate Blanchett as the bad guy and she looks like she's gonna have a blast in this movie and I'm gonna yeah. love it. Um, but to fight them, he's uh, assembling a team together, uh, and Hulk is like, ooh, like the old days, um, which I, Avengers was like six months ago or whatever, yeah. so I don't know what he's talking about, but yeah. it's another, now it's, now the Thor movie is Thor plus Loki plus Hulk plus Valkyrie as like another mm-hmm. Avengers. They're all Avengers now. 
Yeah. It's all it's, it's all Tina's forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's very clicky. They're on their own planet, doing mm-hmm. their own thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it's yeah, it can't just be a Thor movie. Although yeah. I'm trying to decide if that's for better or for worse. I, think I mean, it's they for better. I really did not like the last film. I thought sure. it took itself a little too seriously. I was getting bored with the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think, think you should idea. make a Thor movie without Loki, ever. I think we Ugh. want him forever too, because he's yeah. great. Yeah, they're a good pair. Excuse That's me. the fun. Is, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, Kingsman Golden Circle. We got a trailer for that. That uh, I'm very conflicted with those movies because <laughs> I really don't like violence, and and that series has certainly celebrated violence with like a murder church ballet. Uh-huh. And it's uh, definitely the thing that they've decided is the only answer. And a lot of movies do this, but Kingsman seems to really celebrate and, and revel in it. Um, but the movies are super fun and the trailer looks yeah, cool. Yeah, I, don't, I think the violence is great in those. Yeah, I, honestly, I love it. The uh, only part I didn't like was the ending because it was like... Yeah, it was super weird. That was so weird. Princess butt sex, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Princess butt sex. Uh, princess, yeah. Butt sex. Yeah. princess butt sex, of yeah. course. Um, my favorite princess of the Disney canon. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think she's problematic. Can't. Do you? I don't know. I think she's a bit before her time. Uh, that was the only part I... Uh, I, love the, I, I love that movie. I love the movie. It was very out of place it. and strange. It's, it was weird. They, 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 the director had then gone on the record and said that it was parody. And like, obviously, we're parodying the Bond films by right, enhancing and, and going beyond what they would have ordinarily done. Yeah, but it's still completely out of place and weird yeah. in that movie. Yeah, uh, you didn't go far enough to for it to be like, ah, yeah. we're same page. Right. That was weird. I'm still gonna see it. I'm still gonna see it. Yeah, I love it. yeah, like, for sure. Like, I, I, I think someone in our forums pointed out that if this became the new James Bond as a thing that just keeps going forever, then it would be great. And I think I would be completely fine with that because it's, it, doesn't take it, too self, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's very over the top, it's very fun. It's very earnest about, we think, uh, sliding across a car and like doing a spin move and shooting a gun. We think that's cool. And we don't feel self-conscious about cool. thinking like <laughs> superficially cool things are cool we're, and we're not gonna apologize for it. Yeah. Which I like, we don't often get like even James Bond now is kind of aware of itself and yeah. and gets too grim and, and meaningful. Mm-hmm. And this is just like, no, he's gonna he's a uh, his umbrella shoots guns. <laughs> Before the premiere of The Last Untouchables, Sylvester Stallone got up on stage at the, at the premiere and was like movies have to be self-aware now. Like you can't just make a movie where everything's cool. <laughs> and he got real upset about it. Aww. And and then you watch, it, it does seem like in The Untouchables, everything's pretty apologetic. And the entire <laughs> time you're going through it, it's like, yeah, we know it's silly, everyone. We know, Yeah. yeah. We, but we like it. And he's, <laughs> yeah. he's a good ambassador for, for, for this idea of movies that don't take themselves too seriously. This In a, a couple episodes back, we talked about Marvel ruining their movies with, with Bathos, which is not taking mm-hmm. itself too seriously. And the guy who made that video cited Rocky as his favorite movie, and it ends with the two main characters screaming, I love you, over and over again, <laughs> and yeah. then freeze frame, and the movie's over. And it's like, yeah, Sylvester Stallone, that's how you feel. That's how yeah. you think a movie should end, is Man. a big fight, and then an entire crowd of people <laughs> screaming, I love you. And I think about that with like uh, Crocodile Dundee, where it ends with them like, standing on top of a crowd and walking towards each other screaming I love you and they hug in a subway and it's great. Mm, and those two movies are very similar. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> it's so yeah. clear to me now why you love Love, love Actually. Mm-hmm. Like so much of Love I Actually, love you. so I much, so many you. of the vignettes end I with love like, you. yeah. I love you. <laughs> oh man, I just watched Cobra. I had never seen Cobra. You guys seen Cobra? No. What is Cobra? <gasps> oh, oh, oh. It's Did they have a trailer at Comic-Con maybe? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, they didn't. All but right, it's we'll take this train wherever you want it to go then. <laughs> <laughs> Off the rails into, <laughs> into a brick wall. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's, I think his most earnest film I have ever seen. Cobra, oh. Yeah, it is Sylvester Stallone to 110%. Describe a thing about this movie. Uh, I, I can't. Does, one I, moment. That's the one where he wears the glasses, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Glasses, and he's chewing on a thing as it's he's like, like he's solving like a crisis. Pilskin, Pilskin, whatever it is. But yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's just him being a, a badass that's not tortured like Rambo. Uh, okay. Um, so great. I, I have. So bad. I, I've forgotten that movie so hard. <laughs> yeah. I'll hey. check it out. It sounds like he's got glasses and chews on a thing. Mm-hmm. So chews I'm on, a on thing, board. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ready Player One. It was a book, now it's a movie from Spielberg. Everyone's very excited about this. Uh-huh. They had an, what's that? Uh, I don't know. She's not excited, <laughs> okay. I think it was that, that um, They had an Iron Giant in it. They got more than that. That man. I like. I oh, like the Iron Giant. <laughs> it's because you love the Iron Giant. Love the Iron Giant. Okay, go on. It's a fantastic <laughs> film. Underrated. I mean, that's my review of How? the movie. 
how did they make this movie? I so I watched the trailer for it, mm -hmm. and I don't understand how you're allowed to do this because they have every single property in it possible. And how do you get the right. approval from I all mean, of those? The those idea of the movie uh, is, and the book, I guess, is it's the future, it's virtual reality, and mm -hmm. it's whatever reality you want, which is why people are interacting with uh, T-Rexes and Iron Giants and the DeLorean and the Ghostbusters, and it's just yeah. like, it's, uh, I think it assumes if you could create any world you want, it would be movies that Steven Spielberg produced at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's oh, the yeah. conceit of this film, is everyone's favorite reality is <laughs> reminder of like Jaws. Fuck, is that what it is? Are I don't they all know. Spielberg uh, properties? Is that how they did it? Or because at least his friends that he could call mm -hmm. up and be like, yo, I'm doing Ready Player One, you want in <laughs> yeah. on this? I think that movie probably has all the money in the world. So like a character, like a movie character doesn't crumble into dust when it goes into another franchise's thing. Yeah. You can like, if you have money, you can license mm -hmm. the rights to the DeLorean or the Ghostbusters logo, and then you can just put them in mm -hmm. your movie if you pay money for it. I don't understand it as a conceit for what the future will be like, because it's all these kids who like march in unison and sit in their fake cars and like all play cars together in a way that like I think if I had boundless virtual reality capabilities, the last thing I'm doing is surrounding myself with 900 people who are doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Because like I can get in a car with a bunch of nerds and drive. Like so you're LARPing on the freeway event. all the time. <laughs> yeah, but you can't get into Lightning McQueen and go drive with them. Uh, that's a car from Cars. I know, but now oh, I'm trying okay. to think of like. <laughs> that's my other favorite Disney princess from the game. Like like <laughs> but his, sex and Lightning <laughs> McQueen. Yeah. I'm like in his brain and stuff, and I don't care for that. Uh, yeah, you are. Yeah. I guess because right. uh, you're actually driving at that mm -hmm. point. I, um, don't, I mean, but this also says a lot this about me. will answer all these questions for us. <laughs> it says a lot about me that if I had uh, boundless virtual reality technology, I would still respect the rules of what this universe was. It was like, no, boys can't ride Lightning McQueen. That's not, he drives himself. I will take my car, please. <laughs> my piece of shit Santa Fe. Yeah, it's also, a str it's a, I mean, people love the book, but also that's a, it's one of those young adult books that like, people think you would be into, and like maybe your aunt would buy for you, mm -hmm. and you read it and be like, I guess that was a book about something that <laughs> It does feel a little pandering think, to you. Yeah. yeah, like it's pandering. It's like, oh, you like video games. You would like this about two kids it. that fall in <laughs> love in a video game. Right. Like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, get, I, I can see where you're coming from. Right. I never read the book, but that does you know, feel very much like, right, it's, yeah. it's very kids much are gonna like, eat this <laughs> shit up. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's very much like Shakespeare, like, Shakespeare was the the first rapper. Doesn't that blow your mind? And it's yeah. like, if you like video games, what about a book about them? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Or like Twilight, like, mm, girls like love and vampires. Read this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Boys like love too. And vampires. Oh yeah. You like <laughs> it feels like on par with Pixel, or yeah. Pixels, yes. or whatever that movie yeah. was. Yeah. Which we already have. Mm -hmm. We've been uh, pretty negative about Comic Con. Uh oh. Oh, sorry. Is there? Well, I'm just frustrated. I'm, I'm frustrated that this movie gets to be made. Yeah. Because I remember as a kid watching uh, the anti-drug cartoons where they got all the characters together. You had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Alvin and the Chipmunks Whoa. with like Muppet Babies, and yeah. they're all in one room trying yep. to convince this kid not to do drugs. <laughs> and as a kid, I, I remember that didn't even phase me. It, I didn't understand property rights and, and yeah. things like that. So. Well, as I got older, I was like, well, you'll never be able to do that again, because how are you going to get all those artists to agree to do that and collaborate like mm -hmm. that, or just Money. allow them to just have, yeah, and, and, <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> and to pay all the copyrights. And then they made this movie, and I was like, we could have been doing this <laughs> shit the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. Since, yeah. since nothing means anything, why haven't Poochie and a Stegosaurus been in a movie together? Right, you just, if you're allowed to just yeah. do that, then this is, what, why do we even create the Marvel Cinematic Universe? We could have had the, the Anything yeah. cinematic universe. Yeah, I mean, it also it's super in vogue after the success of Lego, and people mm -hmm. are like, "Oh, wait, what? People want that?" Oh yeah. So from now on, I hate to say this, but I think that is gonna be a trend that we see is as many crossovers and yeah, like surprise. It it's SpongeBob and Drew Carey from the Drew Carey Show. I would watch that. <laughs> I mean, sure, I'd be curious. <laughs> right. Does, is Drew Carey's brother sure. still there? Steve? Yeah. Probably. Okay, I'm on board. Okay. Oh, actually, I think he went on the run because they're his. Is he the Zodiac killer? Because <laughs> no, his cool. and Mimi's baby um, burned a house down, and then he ran away. Oh, okay. That's some uh, later season Drew Carey defense <laughs> for you guys out there. If you have time, uh, about 
a year ago during the Republican National Convention, I did a 200 tweet storm about the Drew Carey. You can all check it out. Just Google Dan O'Brien Twitter, Drew Carey. It's all Drew Carey or One Tree Hill. No, with the <gasps> Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Hill? Gilmore Girls. Gilmore oh, Girls. Yeah. I, Those are the things One I Tree about. Tweets is what I used to do. I used to watch One, one Tree Hill and Twitter. Really? Yeah. Oh, I hate that. You didn't, oh. do, one, you didn't do One Tweet Hill? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> no! Go back, Go back get no! the time machine. Get no! the Terminator, that's his new what mission. What have I done? That's the story, that's the story. I go back and I redo all of my tweets. That's well, that'll it. take us out of Comic-Con in our main story this week. Uh, let's get into questions. <laughs> you guys sent questions on Twitter to Maggie this time because I was sick of writing down the sick stuff. Sick of doing it. <laughs> so I did it. Okay, so uh, our first one is uh, Mr. Woodles. Go on. I don't want to. <laughs> this was a mistake. <laughs> Mr. Woodles. Okay, with Castlevania hitting Netflix and the creator hoping to adapt Metroid, what other video games do you think should head to an R-rated animated show? Man, this is an intersection of things I don't give a shit about. Well, Sonic, mm, Kirby. <gasps> well, here's the say, problem. Any sort yeah. of video, sorry, any sort of Go video ahead. game that's been adapted into a movie, name one that's been great. I wanted Assassin's Creed to, Creed to be great. Yeah, it was great. sucked. It sucked. No, there, there hasn't been a single good Mario Brothers, movie. Prince of Persia. Oh, yeah. man, that uh, sucks Silent so Hill hard. was close, but still pretty Silent bad. Silent Hill, yeah. Ugh. Mortal Kombat exists in my memory as a good movie, there but was I'm not, certain ooh, it's not. That is a great they're film. They're all bad. And so now I, I, I almost feel like it's going to ruin the franchise. If I name a franchise mm-hmm. that I really like, and I'm like, I'd love to see that movie, I think it's, I'm just going to curse right. it. So I want to see <laughs> Soul Calibur as a R-rated animated uh, show about people is fighting it? to find a sword. Okay, is that mm-hmm. uh, what is the what is that game? That's the, there's not much to it. That's so from the Dreamcast, right? There's, what? It's from the Dreamcast, isn't it? Yeah, they've done a couple of reiterations. I used okay. to play it on the GameCube uh, oh. a lot, but uh, the later iterations, it's just a fighting game uh, yeah. of these uh, people from uh, the last one. I think had Darth Vader mm-hmm. uh, and Link. <laughs> that you could I be. mean, to that end, and just a thing a that we were fighter. talking, yeah, like like Ready Player One, the, the what we were talking about earlier, I think to that end I could see uh, a gritty R-rated Super Smash Brothers game where it's just uh-huh. Solid Snake has to wake up every day and, and like, who, what fresh hell is this? Oh, f- it's Kirby, I hate Kirby. He eats me and then he gets some of my stuff and it's bad. Yeah, Smash Brothers has a pretty dark narrative to it, which is there's that hand that comes out and, like, and collects the, the mm-hmm. pieces yeah. and then makes them play. And at the end, you have to fight the hand, yeah. which is like, they're, you know what I'm really? talking about? Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, in the campaign. Story. If you play the campaign of it, of Smash Brothers, uh, yeah, a hand select, you know how you, mm-hmm. you, when you're choosing your player, you have a hand That's on the screen the that evil. clips? Let's say you're for evil. the sake of moving this conversation along, I do know that. Yeah, yes. you're evil. <laughs> so in this sense, the player, the mm-hmm. one who's controlling these characters is the evil one. Mm-hmm. So you're the bad guy. <laughs> okay. See, it's kind and of I can just choose to win by turning off the game and letting them like yeah. stay in their little Or just convincing them that the metal version of themselves is the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. That's fine too. Wow. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to say. Yes. I'm sorry, I hate to ruin the show, but. That's I, fine. <laughs> Ooh, either that or, okay, uh, a show about Knuckles and Rogue uh, getting the Chaos Emeralds. No? All right. Well, wait, hold on. The there's one. Already, there's a Sonic show about that, isn't it's there? Knuckles, it's Knuckles from Sonic and then Rogue from X-Men? No, Rogue from Sonic. There's a Rogue from Sonic? Or ro- uh, Rouge? Rogue. Are you thinking of, of Tails? No. It's the bat. <laughs> the girl bat. She steals the that's, Chaos that's Emeralds. A, that's after my time, uh, Ooh, Sonic. Yeah. I, right. st- I clocked out at Sonic CD. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have you ever watched the little cartoon? There Sonic is. That, that, I mean, that's, that's a very fun cartoon, but mm-hmm. uh, it's for, you know, Which one? The Jaleel White one or the other one? The Chili Dog one? That's the Jaleel White one. There was like a more serious Sonic that didn't oh. have Jaleel White and wasn't really obsessed with oh. Chili Dogs. Hmm. I haven't seen that. Hmm. I used to write Sonic uh, fan fiction when I was a kid. I don't, but yeah, I, I do, that doesn't surprise me at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. It's Rampage, by the way. I want to see Rampage as a movie. <laughs> Thank you. That's they what I was fishing for. They are making it. The Rock is in it. You're going to hate it. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Uh, Mr. Dave Brown says, uh, I think Dan. That's a step up from Mr. Woodles. I still like it, Mr. Dan. A lot of misters. Uh, Dan, I think you've talked about this before, but what is your biggest pop culture blind spot? Uh, and I think for me, until recently, it, until recently, it was Beetlejuice. I had never mm-hmm. seen Beetlejuice. That's uh, a good one. Yeah. 
but I saw it a couple days ago. Beetlejuice is great. It's again for me. It's a music thing. I don't. I can name maybe like two David Bowie songs, and uh, I'm, I never really mess around with Jimi Hendrix. Uh, and uh, video games is obviously a pretty big blind spot. I didn't even know that <laughs> Rogue or Rouge was a ca was a girl bat who yeah. stole Chaos Emeralds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For a long time for me, it was Terminator 2. And oh. that was a, a lot of fun for me to try and describe the movie to people because <laughs> I only peripherally kind of knew what happened in it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, now I would say it's probably Dr. Strangelove. That's just one where I've just pretended oh. this entire time that I would know a lot about the movie. <gasps> but I know nothing about it yeah. other than that it takes place in a war room from what I understand. Oh, and that somebody, like four, somebody four rides a bomb places. at the end. Did we huh? talk about that in like movie? Four different places. Impossible. No, yeah. I've only ever seen stuff <laughs> in the war room. I think we talked about the it's movie a, on our 10 best. <laughs> I think it's, it's a very good you. movie. Yeah, right. I would, then I would have been very silent during that part. <laughs> Peter Sellers is three people in it. Really? Mm -hmm. This movie's mm -hmm. dumb. George C. Scott does the performance of a lifetime. It's very good. It's very um, good. Also, uh, I'm going to get people angry at me. Anime and manga or manga. Mm. Um, a, those are the same thing to me. B, I don't know anything about them. I used to watch Dragon Ball Z, so I can like... Ah. Stumble my way through a couple of beats, and I, and I still, because my brain exists the way that it is, remember everyone's name perfectly and what like the main thrust of that show was mm -hmm. but like cowboy bebop Ooh. nothing about don't know anything about it not okay. even sure if it's actually anime or manga <gasps> or if it's a, its own thing have you seen akira no okay wow. we'll watch akira okay that's a good <laughs> entry point that is a good entry point it's very simple that's the well that's the other thing about pop culture blind spots is uh and i'm guilty of the same thing i know that i didn't watch it and i did that on purpose yeah i'm not like you made a choice. Waiting for a yeah. friend to show you how to, to get like, it. Yeah. Here's Ghost in the Shell. I it's have. where I take you my little over. stance because yeah. I watch so much of it. There has to be a thing that I'm just against. You yeah, know? that's fine. Yeah. I, arbitrarily, we've all decided. I just, I'm not into this. I don't, yeah. I don't get yeah. the Pokemon. That's not my thing. I'm okay, okay. if it misses me forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Misty's me, since we're talking Pokemon. That's a thing, right? She's uh, a girl. She stole one. the Chaos Emeralds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The girl bat. Uh, cool, so this is a fun one uh, from Cropa Cabana. Why? <laughs> Hold on. Why? I bet there so were like fun. way better questions, but you just Go found the best it. names. The ones that you wanted to say. <laughs> no, no, no. These are also the best. Just a big uh, cross section between the two. Okay, what non musical movie do you wish was a musical? <laughs> and or the opposite, if you want to take a musical to make it serious. But this question deserves more of my time. It's a great question. Which question do I want as a musical? What I mean, which were... movie? Oh, I knew, I know one that we got that I didn't want. <laughs> Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Yeah? <laughs> I don't think I wanted that. Did you see it? No. There's a whole sequence uh, where the main villain who shows up in the second act and they made up for this musical oh. um, talks about Shoes. She has eight legs because she's a spider oh, monster. And she talks right. about how much she loves shoes and how great shoes are. And uh, you too did the music for this. So at one point there's uh, teens going by in a car and the car is cardboard because it's Broadway. Mm -hmm. And they're driving by and they're like, I love this song! And it's Elevation by U2 playing and they just drive across and that's it. And that's oh, the scene. Oh! You too! Mm -hmm. They would do that. Yeah. Their own song and a thing. Mm. I had all that time. To think I know. about <laughs> movies. <that> should be <laughs> well, musicals. I'm trying to think of like who, which which movies was really they're really efficient at using big groups of people, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. moving large groups of people around because that's going to be the most fun in a musical uh, is to have like yeah. a whole choreography dance. Yeah. Um, but Akira Kurosawa was really good at that, but I don't want to make any of his movies musicals. I mean, mm. I think the 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 most cheating answer right now uh, is for me, multiplicity, because Cody Johnson and I are writing a multiplicity musical, oh, all right. an unauthorized Pitch it, please. <laughs> multiplicity musical um, that I think will be really funny for uh, a number of reasons. Like, if, It would be great if we could do it as a movie and got Michael Keaton, um, because oh, yeah. if uh, for singing, uh, you know, I used to be in a pretty cool acapella group, for what I also sang I with my brothers. You didn't know that? Oh, no. yeah, no. And my whole Damn. family sang together growing up. <gasps> and like Damn. the reason that like Jonas Brothers and Hanson have a specific like quality to their voice that is really pleasing is because if you have similar voices with someone, your uh, voices will blend better and just like create a nicer kind of harmony. We're and in a family uh, band. Yeah. So now imagine four Michael Keatons. They all have the same voice and they're doing four part harmony. That would be tight as f And there's a really cool sequence mm -hmm. where um, three of the Michael Keatons 
accidentally have sex with Annie McDowell one at a time. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're all very different. Like there's tough Michael Keaton, there's sensitive Michael Keaton, and there's like slightly brain damaged Michael Keaton. Copy of a copy Michael right, Keaton. Right, right. Yeah. So you could do the same musical like theme and motif, but like here's the same song, but as a rock version, here's the same song, but as a love ballad, here's the same song, but as like a wacky circus That's ke- party. Cool. Yeah. And Copy of a Copy of a Copy is one of the songs, yeah. and uh, No More Dugs is one of the songs, because that's what Michael Keaton says when they make the copy of the copy. He's like, huh. no more Dugs, that's the rule. And I was like, no more Dugs is a good name for a song. What are, the really sensitive one, does he at one point say, air is the enemy? Uh, when he's like, yes, that's when, a he, great when, when he's uh, like sealing up. Yeah, that's sandwiches. a great name for a for a yeah. song. Airs the enemy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, <laughs> that's great. The doctor, when he meets the doctor, he's like, "What do you do?" And the doctor says, "I make time." Uh, that's a good. Oh. Yeah. I mean, the I the musical time. writes itself. I mean, it doesn't. I'm writing it. <laughs> um, but that's yeah, that's great. Multiplicity of the musical. Hmm. This is such a hard question. <laughs> I've given you so much I time. It. I know, but I've been listening to you instead about <laughs> f***ing multiplicity. I mean, like, I cared. I was really into it. I got really invested in this. Now I want to see yeah. it. One that I'm surprised they haven't made is a Pirates of the Caribbean musical. Oh, because yeah. Because the ride yeah, is very musical. Mm-hmm. It's silly. It's pirates. There's mm-hmm. a lot of pirate shanties. They could have. If they wanted to. They'd probably be stepping on Pirates of Penzance, another great musical. They'd they get a lot, on a lot of, of things. unflattering <laughs> comparisons. <laughs> Why stop it? Pirates of Penzance. Um, I guess I'm going to go with uh, Gone in 60 Seconds. Okay. Yeah, and just stick with Speak it and not give you, <laughs> <laughs> give you an answer as to why. <laughs> uh, ooh, oh, or um, uh, uh, Planet of the Apes. I would as see Monkey musical. singing. From the Simpsons episode where they made a Planet of the Apes musical? Stop it, did they? <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Troy McClure is the human, the part he was born to play. Oh, baby. oh yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, all right, take that one, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Readjusted it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You can leave it out. You don't have to like live with this poison now. No, it's okay. Don't die. Okay. Are there any more questions? No, that's all. That's all. Yeah, guys. Okay. Well, that was great. I really like uh, the questions that you pick better than the questions that I pick. Really? Um, yeah. Even I, I, with the names, uh, can we go back to Mr. Woodles for a second? Yes, I think some of us never left Mr. Woodles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Woodles, I'm going to cry. This is... I, now I'm picturing Maggie tonight, like eight hours from now, going to bed and just can't sleep because the name's still in her head. <laughs> just rocking back and forth. Yeah, laughing in her bed. Just a tear-stained mean? pillow. Ranking because... member of the Woodle Army. <laughs> Can you please explain your name? Either just to eat Maggie. Yeah, just, just her is fine. <laughs> and Maggie, our, our weeping co-host, where can Mr. Woodles um, and the like find you on Twitter to explain themselves? Um, you can find me at Maggie May with an E, fish like the animal. Soren, yeah, you, you're keeping it together. You can find me at Soren, S-O-R-E-N, underscore L-T-D. If I can make a suggestion for the show. Mm-hmm. The two co-hosts yeah. sit over here next time. You grill whoever uh, the third <laughs> wheel is yeah. over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. It's the co-host and, and the, uh, the prop, whatever the other yeah. thing mm-hmm. is that we can the fill prop. a chair with. I'm Daniel O'Brien. You can find me at D-O-B <laughs> underscore I-N-C. This is uh, one of our wackier episodes, and I'm really excited about oh. that. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm. Nuts! <laughs> <laughs>Hey everyone, thanks for watching that video. Make sure you click the big C in the middle to subscribe. Make sure you click either the videos to my left, your right, if you want to watch them, they're very funny. Click that super fun YouTube bell that will alert you when we have new videos coming out. And uh, let's see how long Maggie can keep it together. Just thinking about Woodles. Yeah, don't. Woodles, Woodles. She's preparing for a spit take already. <laughs> <laughs>